What does Maslow's hierarchy of needs have to do with your retirement plan? Well, here to talk with me about this is Brad Pistol from Safe Money Radio. Brad, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You recently wrote an article about this very topic for Retirement Daily. We're eager to have you walk us through what you wrote. Sure. Well, of course, a lot of people probably remember being in junior high and high school and, and having to see this, this triangular chart about Maslow's hierarchy. And you think, I'll never see that again. It's kind of like taking trig or, or calculus. When, when will I ever use that in life? But it actually has a lot to do with retirement planning. When you, so, when you think when you think through that, you, you, you look at the, you know, there's the levels on the hierarchy scale. The most basic needs are not the things that you would normally think about. You know, we think about when it comes to retirement, how big our buckets are and how much money's in there and that sort of thing. But it's actually, when you look at Maslow's hierarchy, it talks about breathing, food, water, shelter, your very basic uh, form of needs. And until those are met, you can't progress to any of the other steps or levels in life. Those are the most important. Right. So the number one step in your uh, your Maslow's hierarchy of retirement income needs? Safety. Um, safety is until a person feels safe, they cannot progress to anything else. So when, it, you know, I, I've been on Safe Money Radio for almost 12 years now. And the majority of callers, you know, we're not, you don't, you don't have any control over who's listening to the radio and who's going to call in. But the people that do call in, it's the same thing over and over and over again. It's they're not calling about the return on their money. They're calling about the return of their money. It's how do I keep what I have saved my whole life for safe? And so that that actually kind of goes hand in hand with the article I wrote, because it's what I keep hearing from thousands and thousands of callers is that they're more concerned with keeping what they have and making sure it lasts the rest of their life. Right. So when, when you think about Safety, uh, obviously, to my way of thinking, Social Security and pensions come to mind. Uh, yes. What else comes to mind in, from what you wrote about? Well, so those are two great things, Social Security, and we hope it's going to last the rest of our lives. Pensions, and again, we hope it's going to last the rest of our lives. But on a guaranteed basis, you have to go to some form of insurance. It's got to be things like specific types of annuities, perhaps, that have uh, an underlying guarantee on your principal where it can't be lost. Or perhaps income riders. A lot of the most of the time when I write annuities for clients, I'm a certified annuity specialist um, that we want to attach an income rider to it because they, they not only want to know that their principal is not going to go backwards, but they want to know that if they do need to take income from it, that income stream is going to last whether they live to be 90, 100, 105 because we're living longer. So that, that's with pensions and Social Security, you have things like uh, annuities that will guarantee lifetime income. Right. And of course, there, there are many different kinds of annuities. Uh, any thoughts about which, which ones some uh, readers might and viewers might think about? Yeah, absolutely. I think in, in, in each person's specific situation, it's best to talk to your financial professional and find out, again, what are your goals for this pot of money? I'll always tell uh, a client, they'll call in and say, hey, I've got a 401k, where should I put it? My answer is, I don't know. I don't know until we talk. Tell me what the goal is, what the purpose is for this pot of money, and I'll tell you what type of product or account would fit best with it. So if it is lifetime income, I tend to hedge towards something that may be either a be like a fixed index annuity with an income rider. But if a person is more um, want to take more risks uh, and are not as worried about that, a variable annuity might work for it. So, you know, you've got fixed, fixed index variables. There's like you said, there's all different types of annuities and it's going to depend on that person's specific situation, which one to use. Right. Um, in the article, Brad, you also mentioned uh, managing and mitigating the risk of sequence of return. Um, talk more about sure. that. Yeah, so I, I've written a couple of books um, and, and also I work closely with people that are obviously uh, authors. And Tom Hegna, he had recently had a new book that came out and he talks a lot about how important the sequence of return risk is right before the, the first few years before retirement and the first few years right after retirement. It's critically important. As you know, you go through an, an 08 or an 01, uh, six months before you start retirement, you're going to be in trouble. If you go, if your money's at risk, you go through that in the first four or five years of retirement, it's, it's going to crush the retirement. So when you can look at a sequence of return risk, and a lot of people can Google that or look it up on a, on a website, the, the importance of when it go, a market goes through a correction as you start to draw down your money is critically important. So in my opinion, and why I write, write articles like this, 
keeping your money 100% safe just before retirement or just after retirement is critically important because of sequence of return risk. You don't want to run out of money and, and end up back at work. That's right. how you protect that. And in the article, you also make mention of one of my favorite uh, authors and experts on retirement and complaining, Wade Fow. And he talks about how, the point at which you would replace your bond portfolio with income annuities. Talk more about that. Yeah, he does. He says that, you know, it, depending on uh, sequence of return risk and how familiar you are with that, it would it would be good to consider taking part of your bond portfolio off the table and replacing it with income annuity specifically. Um, and he, of course, is an income planning specialist in what he teaches people about the RICP uh, designation. But that is so that, I mean, as you know, there there's only specific types of products and accounts that are 100% guaranteed and an income annuity with an income rider is one of those products. So if you want to go fully toward the safety hedge, then something that's insured is the way to go. And considering right. replacing part of, that, part of that portfolio with an income annuity is a great idea. All right. So we covered lots of ground. Anything that we missed or anything that you've already mentioned that bears uh, reemphasizing? Well, for, for every every person's individual situation is, is unique to its own. So people will always say, okay, here are all my pots. I have a 401k, I have a 403b, an IRA, a Roth. How much should I put into some type of guaranteed bucket? I always answer that question and those that are watching right now and listening, here's, here's the same question for you. Take your total number. So let's say it's 500,000 in this example. You have 500,000 that's there in your different pots of retirement income money. Um, how much of that do you want to lose? How much would you want, want to go backwards? At what point would it become uncomfortable for you? If a person says, well, I don't want to lose any of it, then you, you need to definitely move some toward the, the safety bucket. But if someone says, ah, you know, I could, I could, I want some of the upside. And so I could have it go back to 400 or 350 in a correction. I know that's going to happen. Find out what your threshold of pain is, whatever that is. If you say, I wouldn't want it to go before below 400, if your pot was 500, then you need to make sure that you're doing something on an insured basis with that 400,000. Otherwise, you're, you're leaving your threshold of pain higher than you want it to be. So just take your number, sub, subtract out your threshold of pain, and then you know how much you probably should put into a secure bucket. All right, Brad, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with our readers and viewers. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. It's good to be here.